Welcome to the Maker Inside. My name is Seth Hunter. We're at the Intel booth here in San Mateo, California. We're going to take a look at wearables today, and Skyler St. Ledger is going to give us a tour of the rest of the Maker Fair. My name is Selena Salazar. I'm with Intel. I am at Maker Fair Bay Area, and we're here promoting the Make It Wearable Challenge. We're doing circuit board nails at the Maker Fair, and come get a manicure, get your nails done, and then after you can go in the Manicam, which is a little runway for your hands, and get pictures taken and um, upload those, have them emailed to yourself, share your nails, spread the word on the challenge, and what Intel's doing at Maker Fair. We also have circuit board tattoos, so if you're not into getting your nails done, you can get a tattoo in the form of a circuit board. So Make It Wearable is a global challenge with up to $1.3 million in prizes. There are two tracks, a visionary track and a development track. The visionary track, you submit a one minute video on any idea you have in the wearable space. It doesn't have to be technologically feasible. And the development track is more focused to, on the makers and having an idea that is technologically feasible if you want to know more information, go to makeit.intel.com. So, uh, this whole setup is being powered by two different Arduino chips, and it's the same little Arduino chip that's uh, right here. So, the cool thing about it is that, so, with this tiny chip, we can control information that's coming from the sensors and going to the servos here and to the lights in the back. I can not only use this for my costume stuff that I do at night, but during the day I'm a scientist over at the University of Washington. And I think that having costumes as being the way that you get introduced to Arduino is also a really nice thing because it's a really low pressure method. Like trying to get into to jumping into using Arduino for using that for research or for measurement, that's kind of intimidating if you don't really know what you're doing yet. And what I'm trying to get across here is that it's a set of tools that's really useful and what you apply the tool to can be almost anything. Like research and cosplay are two things that I think are pretty far apart. And there's a lot of space in between that you can use them for too. And the Maker Fair is an awesome demonstration of how many things you can use Arduino for. So we're at Maker Fair 2014 in the Expo Hall. Maker Fair is a really cool event because there's a whole community of people that are showing the things that they've made. Let's go see what there is. So I'm here with Ben Krasnow and he has some really cool things that he's going to show us. So, what is this over here? This is my Ruby laser. So my project this year is to show off how Ruby lasers work. And uh, the laser is a single shot laser. So if you focus the beam down, you can actually punch holes in metal. We have a large capacitor bank to store energy. And when we fire the laser, all of the electrical energy in those capacitors uh, is uh, sent into a flash tube inside here. So are you using flux capacitors for this? Yeah, these are just regular capacitors. How many are there? Uh, it's probably about 90 something in there. What's the total capacitance of it? It's about 8 kilojoules if you take it all the way to the top. Wow. What is this over here? This is my dad's Jacob's Ladder. So inside here there's a high voltage transformer, a neon sign transformer. Okay. And it's connected right across the two terminals there. Okay. So the high voltage breaks down the air and creates an electric arc. And the heat from the arc, it's hot, makes it rise. Because so the, the hot, hot air, air actually pushes up the arc yeah. and the hot air balloon. So we tried an experiment. We turned it on its side and then started to tip it upside down. And the arc doesn't go up. Doesn't That's really cool. Anymore. I'm here with Michael, and we're at the High Striker. And he's going to tell us how he starts all of the flaming torches. I climb the tower. I open the valve. I light the pilot, Okay. jump off the tower. Cool, could you do that? Yes. So I'm here with Sean, he also works on the High Striker, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the construction of it. Yeah, so the way the electronics work on this, there's a rotary encoder okay. on the side of the strike plate. So uh, a rotary encoder is really good at measuring position very okay. accurately. Um, so when you hit that plate, what happens is the rotary encoder takes a whole bunch of different position snapshots. Okay. And then it calculates velocity between uh, every single one of those positions. So we take okay. about six or seven points, calculate times between all of them so we can compute velocity. 
inside the Arduino, we've got a, a, a set of curves stored as a table. Okay. Um, and whichever curve you beat is how many poofers you get. Okay. Um, so the reason we do it that complicated is it allows us to tune it really heavily over the, the five. Okay. We've only got five poofers, but we can tune it pretty precisely. So if a little kid comes up and just taps it, like he'll get something to happen. But to get all five to go off, you have to really hit it really hard. Okay. Right. So Whenever you're ready. Okay. <laughs> That's big <laughs> fire. Wow. That's it for the Maker Faire 2014. My name is Seth Hunter from Intel Labs. Thanks so much for watching.